Hello and welcome to this channel. I've been receiving requests to do um, tutorials from a demographic I can only assume to be students, perhaps. So this is the first tutorial I'm gonna do and I hope that you find it uh, useful. Uh, so I'm going to do a tutorial concerning um, uh, torsion uh, formulas which we've developed and at this point maybe you can refer to if you have not watched you can refer to the torsion I think believe one two and three in a series of my videos uh, dealing with the uh, structure uh, related to structures so so for example if we have a figure as shown and then uh, for the range shown Compute the magnitude of torque applied to the bolt if a force of 50 Newton is exerted at a point 250 millimeters out from the axis of the socket. The force applied at the socket itself balances the applied force and allows pure torque to be applied to the bolt. So, uh, the solution part, uh, what do we know? Objective is to compute the torque T and then the knowns we know about the force, the applied force 50 Newton and then the distance, the D or the, uh, the distance uh, from the point of from the center of the axis to the point of application of the force is 250 millimeters so we know that torque is force times the distance and uh, the torque, I mean the force is 50 newtons and then the distance is 250 millimeters. I think it is important to always work with SI units to avoid uh, confusion. And so you find your answer to be 12.5 newton meter. Now, I think that's quite straightforward. And to the second example, I think we'll go a little bit more into details. Uh, so for the second, again the same, the same uh, uh, figure, for the socket range extension shaft shown, compute the maximum torsional shear stress in the middle portion where the diameter is 9.5 millimeters, the applied torque is 10 newton meter. So again, to the solution, what do we know? I mean, what is the objective? The objective objective is to calculate torsional shear stress and then what do we know? We know that the torque is 10 newton meter, the diameter is 9 millimeters. The D, uh, yeah, this, this, the, the distance to the point of application of the, 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 sorry, D is the diameter, of course, and Recall this. If please, if you don't remember this formula, you can check uh, the f the videos where we developed this this uh, formulas. I think uh, it's called torsion one, two, and three, I believe. And from the from there, you understand uh, how we developed this formula. So in this case, we are simply going to apply the formula. So the formula can be written in any of these ways. TR over J or TC over J. R is the radius. Some, some people would like to refer to the radius as C. I think it's okay. And J is second polar moment of area. And T is the, the torque. And then tau max, of course. This is the, this is the, the tau max is the, is what we are looking for okay and so for a section a circular section which is not below uh, j is calculated as at pi d power 4 divided by 32 and is always important to work uh, in standard units and therefore j um, uh, is j we find j at 8 times 10 to minus 10 meters per four and if you substitute in the formula for 
a torsional shear stress or shear stress then we find our our we find the the this as your we find this as your uh, the the torsional shear stress as 59.38 MPa. Please note the dimensional analysis here because this is Newton meter meter divided by meter power four. You can see how this comes to Newton per meter squared, which is essentially the the units for for stress, which is pascals or Newton per meter squared. So just to demonstrate that point there and then finally uh, calculate the maximum personal shear stress that would develop in a solid circular shaft having a diameter of 32 millimeters if it is transmitting uh, 95 kilowatts while rotating at 525 rotations per minute so the solution for this is that the objective is to calculate shear stress so here we go a little bit into the detail now we're talking about even power so then we know that the power is 95 kilowatts and then the radius of course in terms of meters is we're just converting this into meters and the rotation I mean the n is the rotation 525 rpm and it's important to work in standard units. So this is what we are trying to do with the radius and uh, the rotations we will also convert to SI unit. So we know uh, power equals the torque times the N and N should be in radius per second and T should also be in a Newton meter or the standard units, SI units. And so if we convert the N into radians per second or the SI units, then you find this is about 54.98 radians per second. And so we plug back into the formula for power to get torque. So if P is T times N, therefore T is P divided by N. And we find our torque to be about 1727.97 Newton meter. Then for a circular section, we know D is by D uh, power 4 divided by 32. And D here is 32 millimeters. It's important to work in SI units, I've said before. So we're simply dividing uh, this by a thousand to make sure we're working in uh, uh, with standard units. And so today, in this case, uh, please note this is not a hollow section. If the, it was a hollow section, we would modify this formula. We simply subtract the inner diameter. So because this is not a hollow section, we just take the D as pole. So J comes to 1.03 times 10 to the minus 7 meters or 4. And we substitute in the famous formula for tau max. Um, which is so tau max from previously is t r divided by j you already know that right so so and then the dimensional analysis and finally find the tau max as 268.57 mpa so that's it guys i hope you find this useful especially for students and um, uh, thank you also for your feedback. If you like this video, please share with your friends. I don't enjoy alone. As uh, some of these uh, uh, things actually can be done with the uh, Excel. Uh, if you also check a series of my videos, you can do um, formula, standard formula in Excel, and especially for professionals or young engineers. Is good so once you understand the idea you just make a template Excel and you can always put the formulas and solve
but for students i'd encourage you to understand the principles and you can follow these videos and tutorials so that you understand so for a student it is important to exercise and practice with the formula but for young engineers people who are professionals you can uh, use a template is always easier and makes uh, uh, your work a little bit neater and you do you can work efficiently so i hope you learned something i hope you find this useful and thank you for your support i hope to see you uh, uh, again for my videos thank you very much goodbye